Well, good morning again, and welcome again to another broadcast of Internet Radio. And I'm your host, Irvish. And we're going to continue on with some articles yet. I still have a few left here. Uh, of uh, Samuel read out, and this one is entitled, The Gift of Teaching in the Church of God. You know, it is... Uh, it nearly it needs hardly to be said that the gift is one of the greatest importance in the church, and a at a rapid glance at its characteristics will be helpful. The gift of teaching is closely connected with the pastor. Both have to do more specifically with the saints through all the gifts that are knitted together. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, Ephesians 4.11. The tender, firm heart of aptness to teach is more helpful in the evangelist, but his is a necessity necessary to the initial work, followed by the pastor and teacher in the care for the upbuilding of the flock of God. Now we're going to go through some points. The first point being a teacher must be born again or must be a true Christian, must have given his life to the Lord. Men are undertaken to teach who are not born again. God forbid that we should speak harshly, but it is not too clearly manifested that many of the teachers in the universities are strangers to God in Christ. Bible uh, studies and uh, teachings have been taken up by uh, prof professors. Uh, or, and then the men are experts in language, uh, astrology, history, and other branches of learning, and take up the Word of God as another department of knowledge. Their approach, it, uh, with little or no thought of having to do with the holy heart searching God, to whom they can only approach through the atoning sacrifice of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son. No wonder that they neither understand the value of the great foundational truth of the common salvation, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14 The teacher, therefore, must be identified with the truth of life. He must be born of God, united to Christ, sealed and anointed by the Holy Spirit. Now the second thing we see, the teacher must have a a uh, facility of reception of truth. So the teacher must have an ear of, for the truth, a mental grasp uh, capable of uh, taking it in, and a judgment uh, capable of coordinating and holding the proper position, all receiving truth, hence, it is absolutely essential that he whom God has called to be a teacher of his people should have a clear grasp uh, of the content of Scripture. Uh, further, the teacher must rightly divide the word of truth. He must understand the dispensation, dispensations of God, especially must he must be a diligent student of truth of uh, Christianity as unfolded in the epistles. One of the responsibilities of a teacher is to meet error in the countless forms 
to protect the beloved sheep of Christ. Now the third aspect that we take in and is the teacher must have a faculty of imparting knowledge to others. One could not rightly be a teacher unless he could share his knowledge with others. Let us then look at some of the uh, requisitions of this. First, number one, the teacher must have a simplicity. It is a great mistake to think obscured mean depth uh, unusually when one uh, clearly understands the subject he is able to explain it to others the true teacher will utter words easy to be understood two the teacher must have the uh, apt ability we must not feed strong meat to babes. It is the mark of a good teacher that he can adapt himself both in manner and language to those he is seeking to instruct. Now, uh, should he do this, he will be enabled to make his teaching progressive. Uh, the learner will not stand still. They will pass from class to class until they can largely do without their teacher, who indeed has been learned with them, and so uh, is a companion as well as a guide. Now, three, a teacher must have uh, a thorough uh, subjection to the word of God. We must beware of allowing ourselves to indulge in mere speculation. There must be the assurance of certainty in what the teacher seeks to impart. The teacher should be well-rounded and in due portion. Uh, thus, the uh, ever balance of the truth will be preserved. And the fourth and last thing, the teacher must have enthusiasm. If a teacher is not uh, commanded by the, his subjects, how can he expect, uh, uh, expect to interest others? How it misrepresents the great theme if he has an has air of indifferences and speaks in hesitation and apolog apologistic ways. For those who are seeking to use the gift of teaching, may we suggest a fresh manna should be given, not truth that has been dull in our minds. For this reason, the teacher should never uh, cease to be a student. He needs to keep learning himself. Well, with that said, I'm just going to end our uh, broadcast today. Uh, this was a shorter article than we had the other day. Uh, so God bless until next time. Bye for now.